Hello everyone, welcome back to the Padawan Podcast, Apocalypse Movies All Star Wars Podcast. We're breaking down everything from the galaxy far, far away. Uh, I am your host, Jake Berlin, aka Qui-Gon Jake, and I am joined today by Jacob Bartley to my left, uh, Grandma Bartley himself, and Brian Avalicino, oh. who I think I have dubbed Brian Fett via a comment. I think it's just easy and simple and to the point. It's, and you're kind of a somebody, guy who, and teeters back and forth. Did somebody comment a name for a name for him? No, I did it on he a, did. Uh, I think it was on, on my birthday, birthday, I commented back, I said, thank you, Brian Fett, just out of the blue. Like, just and out just, of nowhere. It just fit. It, okay. it just, and he's kind of a guy who teeters back and forth between good and evil. And does things for More his own evil. benefit. I like evil. Um, I like the bad guys. But, I mean, Brian Fett works. That works. It I mean, at works. least it's, it's been like... Boba starts for with for now. and Brian starts for now, with I mean, It's been like two years. We need to have something. At I think point. Brian Fett's the one. For now, anyway. Right. Until that a new works. character is created and... We can always call him BB Brian or something if no. we really wanted to. Uh, What's like Brian Wren? <laughs> Brian. Ah. Brian. Uh, I mean, if you want that one. No, no, no. Well, okay. Hey, I, I kind of like it. We can call you Brian Wren. If no, you want no, to, no, I mean, no. totally up to you. We'll uh, but yeah, so Pat on Podcast, All Star Wars. Uh, we're here to talk today. Uh, we're going to be celebrating Star Wars Rebels, um, which is officially one year in, uh, since the finale was released last year in 2018. Uh, four seasons of glorious television um, from Dave Filoni, Dave Filoni, excuse me, um, on Disney XD for four years. And so we're going to kind of talk about it, a little dive into how we thought about it in the very beginning, how we felt about it at the end, are we going to revisit it, the characters, etc., maybe possibly where they can show up again down the line. Uh, but let's dive into a little bit, just open conversation about Star Wars Rebels. Um, initial thoughts when the series first started. Did we like it? Did we not like it? What were kind of thoughts going on through our heads? I actually think about Rebels a lot, like just randomly. And I, the thing for me, it became way more than I ever thought it was going to be. I agree. Because you thought you could have just done the series simple enough about this crew and their mission and like a spin-off not, series that was by not themselves. Went, and... Brought in characters that yeah. we know. You could have had like like a Lando or those type like smaller side characters that don't necessarily have a huge part to play in the lore of Star Wars. Not to diss on Lando, I love Lando, but you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we got Yoda, Obi Wan, Darth Maul, we got Anakin, we got Ahsoka, like who would have thought if if they would have announced we're doing an animated show and you're going to get all this like we would have lost our minds and it actually happened. So yeah. I just Rebels is as an official piece of canon, it's bigger, it means a lot more to the Star Wars universe than people think. It's it is and this is nothing against everything going on in the world of Star Wars. It's probably the most canon driven thing of Star Wars in the new in the official canon that has ever been created. Ne- like to be honest, like I, I didn't even think about that until you just said that right now. Because like the original trilogy is the original trilogy. Yeah. But there's not really like canon things going on in it. The prequel stuff is the prequel stuff, but again, there's not really canon well, those things movies going created on. Created the canon though, but like, that everything else is built if, around exactly. You know? But if you're if you're talking about full fledged canon that connects to every piece of the galaxy, yeah, it's rebels. Well, and the thing is, we got. Thrawn in Rebels, like officially uh-huh. bringing Thrawn from Legends yep. to canon. Thank God. And then you just had so much going on in here. And like it had the biggest connections to like the novels mm-hmm. and to the movies and everything. Sh- I mean, the ghost ship showed up on the novels. And you have Sidula the thing is, like, One. Maybe not us, but like Star Wars fans in general, like don't appreciate Rebels as much because everybody's all, there's all this controversy about the movies. Like, they're not doing what the fans want is bottom line for consensus wise it seems like so and rebels did do a lot of fan service to be on not not in a bad way i mean in no a good way. in a really good way in, in a good way they took advantage of it and that's just that's testament to the mind of dave filoni oh yeah and what he's able to do yeah i mean the, the series is uh it's incredible and yes um if you're gonna watch it for the first time you're gonna notice that the first season is very slow it's very kiddish um, and it kind of had that vibe to it that you would expect from an animated show, but once it catches its stride, it really catches its stride. Um, and it may have been towards the back half of season one. I believe season one is where Lando showed up, if I'm not mistaken. Was, yeah. Um, towards the end, and, and I think Hondo may have popped in there once or twice. I think Leia was in there as well. Um, and so it really starts to catch its stride towards the end, and then season two hits, and it's like, dude. Like, this is 
on another level of Star Wars because you have that Darth Maul. What was fight with Vader? It was the Siege of Lothal. Was that um, well, when he lifts the yeah the, the Siege of Lothal yeah, the yeah. opening because it was a two hour episode. Oh, that was episode that was season two. That was right? season, the opening when season it was two. it was Kanan yeah. and Ezra fighting yeah, Vader. So season two they went balls. To yeah, the ball, and yeah. Va- and Vader called upon the uh, the Inquisitors that after the Grand Inquisitor mm-hmm. had died in season one, um, they called upon the seventh. The seventh sister and the sixth brother, or fifth, fifth, fifth brother, fifth brother and the seventh sister, um, and it was Vader and them. But yeah, Vader lifted the Tie Fighter up, and uh, it. Anyway, it's just the I series really is. Watch them like right now. <laughs> oh, I, I, we're gonna get to that at some point, but I mean, this series overall is just absolutely remarkable. I, I, I'm trying to remember. I, you and I started living together like what two years ago, and I think. At that point, the first season had gone by, and you had got told me you need to watch this show. No, I think I think season it, one and season two was it both of them? Well, uh, because it ended last year, and so uh, we had been living together through the last season, through the last season of the show. Because no, I remember going to third. I remember going to your house uh, when you were living with your brothers and you were logging into my account to watch the that, show. Yeah, and that so was a while and ago. you and I didn't know each other at that point. Yeah, and oh, so God. yeah, and so um, you had you had caught on in season three. That's when you started really watching it. And I was like, watch the show, watch the show, watch the show, just like I did with Clone Wars. And then you just like you got yeah. hooked. I and I need I definitely learned my lesson with not watching the animated shows because. You pushed me into Clone Wars, love Clone Wars. You pushed me into Rebels, love Rebels. And to me, at this moment in time, this is the closest thing, in my opinion, to a movie that is absolutely, like, perfect. Like, it, the history to it, like you said, the canon, this is basically a very long movie. Because it just literally plays directly into that canon timeline in the franchise. It's literally just this little chunk that feels like a movie. Like, at the end of it, it feels like a movie that fit absolutely perfect into the time slot that it fit with the franchise. Yeah, and what we have to remember, too, this this series started out pretty close to when Disney got a hold of Star Wars. Like, they had probably started animating it and creating it um, probably even before that happened. But um, this all happened before Rogue One and before the connection of Mm -hmm. Episode 3 and Episode 4. This was the centerpiece between those two trilogies, like what really went on between there. Um, And then we saw what happened in Rogue One because it pretty much leads right into it. And we see, uh, we see, you know, the ghost ship in Rogue One. And we hear us into uh, Hera's name in Rogue One, and we see Chopper. And um, the canon connection to, is fantastic in the show. The characters, uh, I think we could talk a little bit about that for a little bit. Um, you know, we started off with Kanan, who was who was not necessarily a Jedi when this series started. He was dubbed a Jedi as the series went on. Yep. Um, his development from being this lost Padawan, if you will. Who lost uh, his master in the purge, the Jedi purge of Episode Three, um, and then he ended up on this ghost ship, who eventually became a spark of the rebellion, if you will. Um, his character and what Freddie Prince Jr. did with the voice of the character, amazing, is some of the best characterization that Star Wars has seen in a very long time. He's one I of my agree. favorite characters. Kanan is like so underrated. Honestly, he's overlooked because of the the growth of Ezra and and Hera around him. Like he, he's my favorite character in Rebels. I'm I say that with confidence. And like Ezra, it's I think it's hard for us at our age to like connect with a younger character. Yeah, he was like twelve when the series started, and he really did mature. And I think I I don't think he's dead, but I think he was on the verge. Like if he just continues to train like all his life, he's gonna. He's going to be so powerful. Like, who knows where he ends up or what ends up happening with him. I don't think we've seen The Last of Ezra or whatever, whether it's an animation or live action or whatever. But for me, Star Wars Rebels, like, I'm always going to remember the moments. Like, what did we... We got Anakin or Vader fighting Ahsoka. Like, 
crazy, and right? Like, don't even get me started. Like, you <laughs> lost your mind. And then just the seeing his face inside the mask and him saying, why'd you leave? Or he says, why'd you leave? But they're like, he says it. It's in his thoughts. It, like, they're you tell, yeah, his they're, thoughts. they're connecting yeah. with each other, yeah. So, you know what's weird? Is Actually, the first time we've seen people... Like before the last Jedi, like communicating in their heads. She she was talking. He might have been and talking through wasn't. the mask. Was he? Because I don't know. It, just I his remember. eye was cut, and you couldn't see his mouth. But he the thing could is, it sounded like Anakin's voice. Yeah. It didn't sound like Vader. Well, but we have to remember. Mask, we also yeah. have to remember this was pretty close to Episode Three. This was closer oh, yeah. to Episode Three than Episode Four. Oh yeah. And so he very well could have still been closer to Anakin in yeah. Episode Three than he was in Episode Four because he's still a little bit younger. Yeah. You know, and then, early thirties, like, maybe. Obviously, we got Maul back. I remember when that trailer first dropped, where they had Maul in it. That was crazy, and I love Darth Maul. And then we get to see the death. Obi Wan finally actually kills him. Yes, which is crazy. Yes, and then the thing that's crazy to me is that Ezra met Obi Wan, and like Obi Wan talks to him. Like that's crazy to me. Ezra talks to Yoda. Remember, and uh, I think it was season two. Did they actually meet in person though, because Yoda like no, he force ghosts yeah. him. Yeah. He just like Luke did, which is that we didn't connect the dots. He did it yeah. from Dagobah exactly. onto where they were that's what, that's at the Jedi Temple. You know where... what? I bet you rewatching Rebels, we're gonna be like notice things like that. Like, oh shoot, like that was something done in Rebels before yes. we even saw. I totally agree. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, the character of Kanan is uh, def- I, I think I think we can all agree that he's the best character of the series, and um, his really. His, I yeah. thought you would have said Hera. She's very close for me. She is, but she's, she's like, very Kane close is more for me. of a main character. Like, yeah, Hera is like the top level side character. You know what I mean? Like, she's it's Kanan and Ezra. I would have I, obviously. I, I would have said Ahsoka if she was in it for longer. <laughs> yeah, obviously, uh, she wasn't when in she's it. She's in it. She shines. Uh, so and much. I really, really, really love what they did with Sabine as the series went on. Sabine's great. She, she was. She was very. A one note in the beginning, part, yeah. but the very uh, as she became that Mandalorian leader that we saw her become when she started to leave and go towards her home world and then come back, she became this really strong and powerful character that was smart and and you know cunning and like really knew what she was doing with this outside and world. And, yeah, I mean, but she was even more than that. She she just she felt like more than just your typical Mandalorian. Um, I love the relationship between her and Ezra and what the kind of Brother sister duo they kind of created uh, from that series. Even though he had a crush on her, but she yeah, like, yeah it never definitely developed into it, that. Yeah, though. definitely. And so uh, all the characters. I mean, we can talk about Zeb as well. The, you know, we thought to be the last of his kind and the kind of comedic presence he was, but also the brooding force and how they kind of brought it back to his home world and everything going on with his people and his race and stuff. Uh, Chopper, the the classic <laughs> droid who. The best. Uh, his He's funny hilarious. voice and stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that's to love about great this character. Too. Like, the whole crew is awesome. The whole yes, crew is awesome. totally agree. And uh, all the side characters are well that kind of pop in there as well. So, so there was four or five seasons. There were four. four. Four? Okay. So for me, I didn't 100% love all of Rebels. For me, I started getting, like, tired near the end of the third season, beginning of the fourth season with all the four stuff in the wolves. Mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily love that stuff. And the... I was fine with Ezra communicating with the animals and stuff. That's fine. But for me, it was more... They made like the wolves and the force thing seem like it was going to be something huge. And it wasn't and very it wasn't, impactful. The payoff of that wasn't worth how much time they spent. Yeah, like it, it was... It, and I, I somewhat agree with you. And I think that it felt like to us that it was going to be revealed that someone was channeling themselves well, through the wolves. Well, we thought it was Ahsoka. A lot of people thought it yeah, was Ahsoka. Yeah, and so... It, I'm so glad it wasn't. I agree. I totally so agree. Not only because she's alive, but exactly, just, just yeah. for that was reason. Was Kanan at the end? No, no, it was never... Some, it, it was just like a... We, we all know that the... You know, Star Wars geeks, anyway, that know that, the, that animals have a connection to the Force and, like, there's something going on with the world of animals and the Force in this galaxy and whatnot, but these wolves are specific to it. And we thought that oh my god, someone's going to be revealed. It was just such a huge and focus, and then for a long, for a long I time, just didn't love it. And you know? it it went all the way through season four as mm-hmm. well. Um, I, I I definitely agree with you, but I think I liked it just a little bit more. Like, I, thought I thought it was, it was something cool different. because they they took part in the action at the end and they helped fight. That was dope. But like, like actually, the just the whole lead up to it was just I'm like, all right, come on, let's get it going. But. Honestly, that's the worst thing I can say about Rebels. Like, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. The the filler episodes are probably oh yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and there I was remember, a lot of them. I remember that there was a lot of them early like, on. 
Yeah, a lot of season one. Some in two. Uh, Not a lot in season two because the mall, the mall stuff took over yeah. a lot. Took there over. were a few here and season there. Season three took over a little bit too. They yeah. kind of felt like they were struggling to find themselves uh, with the storyline going on. Because they just came off mall and and the Ahsoka stuff. Well, and they just brought in Cologne. And, Thrawn, and that's one thing that I will say about this series. Um, I love the character of Thrawn. I love what they did with him. But he was heavily underused in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, not just in like the action or whatever it may be, it just never felt like his character really went anywhere. I agree. Uh, he kind of felt like the same thing throughout the entire season three and season four, when he is, and if you know the character of Thrawn, he's the best strategic asset yeah, I in think the galaxy. That's hard to show on screen because yeah. how do you in the books, right? Even though they're you can write all you want, dense, you can show how he's thinking, right? You can't do that in. A TV show or movie, you could, but not on a kids show where like the kids aren't going to care that they're going in his head and showing yeah. what he's thinking, you know. But the thing for me with Thrawn is like, and I did like, I love that he's canon now, and I don't think we've seen the last of Thrawn either. No, but Ezra won't kill him. For me, like, I don't think Thrawn is pure evil. I think he's doing. No, he's not. He's. I think he's doing what he's doing, like to stu- He's studying the Empire. He's like. He's do he got a whole bunch of stuff going on, but in the show they made him seem like he was pure evil. Along with I forget the name of his that lady who's oh, his God. like side his yeah. assistant or whatever. You know who I'm talking about. Yep. It's the, the one with the, the short hair. She looks like Kate Blanchett. So like both of them are portrayed as pure evil beings who just like want to murder rebels in the in the show. And I just don't think that's who those characters were meant to be. But the the creators of the show could have done whatever they want, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean. Thrawn's my favorite character, maybe of all time. Based on what though, the show or the books I or just, what? Every I remember growing up with him, and everyone always like my uncle. Was so you knew about him before, yeah. like oh see, yeah, like I knew who he was, but like I didn't know anything about him before Rebels. Well, you knew, you saw when uh, were we around when I when. We first figured out... Probably. I, I probably have the longest connection with him because I actually read the Thrawn trilogy really? by Timothy yeah. Zahn. I, I I've, I've read I've read it. and So I, I have a prior connection to him and like what he really can did be. The Thrawn, did the first Thrawn novel of the new canon come out before he pe- appeared in Rebels? No. No. Are you came sure? Out after. It was after. came out after. It was okay. definitely Yeah, because season three for Rebels was over two years ago. And the Thrawn books have come out over the last yeah. two years. So I think what happened was, and I'm not saying, like, it's Dave Filoni, but they just went, okay, we have this Thrawn, like, he's a big bad guy, let's make him a big bad guy. And then, um, who's the writer of the Thrawn novels? Timothy Zahn. Timothy, Timothy Zahn, like, showed Thrawn how I want Thrawn to be. He's, like, he's not a bad guy, he just happens to be working for the Empire. But I think we'll see him again, and he'll be portrayed more that way. He's a survivalist. He yeah. will do what he needs to do. To survive, and the person he looks after is himself his, and his race. His people. Mm-hmm. His people is his his people is what drives him. And yeah. I think yeah, what you're saying is about him him using the empire, studying the he's he's doing all of this for his people. Yeah. And it, it was never mentioned. Uh, his backstory was never mentioned. They in really Rebels, have much time. For exactly, that. Yeah. It, it was never a focus, and, and rightfully so. But. Uh, if they ever come back to him, I think that it should be definitely be a key point because from the novels that I've read of him and, and the comic book they did recently of him, the origin story, if you will, uh, his people drive him um, just like art does, the way he studies art to defeat yeah. his enemies. and like he, He's very different in the world of Star Wars. And uh, while I didn't love the way they interpreted him in Rebels... I think that there's massive potential there. I don't know what they're going to do, but maybe it's another animated series or something, but I think we're going to see where him and Ezra went. And I what hope we, so. Maybe it's a novel, and I think Thrawn's going to tell Ezra, like, they're going to be forced to talk because they're just stuck wherever they are together, and then uh, Ezra's going to realize that Thrawn's not such a bad guy, he's just in this situation. I think, uh, you know, and Dave Filoni is currently working on The Mandalorian with John Favreau, and... Who knows what Lucasfilm has planned for him? I mean, obviously, it, it's a no-brainer for him to direct a live-action Star Wars movie. But his home at Lucasfilm is animation. Oh, yeah. That's what he does. And we know that he created the idea of Resistance. He helped with the pilot. But he's not involved with the show. Yeah. Which means he's easily creating something else out there. And by the end of how Rebels ended, 
with Sabine and Ahsoka going off to find Ezra. You know what is what is it? Fifteen, twenty years later, they after Return of the Jedi, I'm gonna just leave that. Filoni's doing something. There's with no it. Way. Filoni is There's doing no something with it. I think they're planning that while Rebel or uh, what is it? Resistance is going on. Yeah, it's honestly, it's probably been in the works before Rebels even ended. I wouldn't be surprised if it's been in the work for years. They they had to know where the story was ending. And honestly, I don't think Resistance is going to be on the air that long. No, I, I wouldn't so be either. surprised if it's only one season. To be honest, because what more can you do? They're like already, I'm like, watching Resistance right now, and you're at the point right before Force the Force Awakens. That's right the now. time they're trying oh, to I tell. They were almost at the Last like, Jedi. Yeah, it's not a huge spoiler, but you know how BB Eight's been on that. Uh, yeah. What a, what the what Colossus, is the base? The Colossus with. Uh, Kaz. Kaz. So I'm like, why is he there? So I don't know if you guys care or not, but Poe basically came to pick him up and said, hey, we got to go, buddy, and left another droid with Kaz. So that's where we're at. Oh, and you should watch the episodes, but he says some dialogue <laughs> that hints at stuff in The Force Awakens. So it's getting there. It would, it would, it, it seems like it's only going to be going one season specifically because The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens are literally back to back to each other. So what? What could you possibly do after that? You know what I mean? Tell a side mission with a Kaz, but like, it's hard. It's I think hard it was to meant to be one. And honestly, I understand why it's called Resistance because it's a recognizable name. But I don't think it should have been called Resistance. I don't know what you call it though. Yeah, I, I have know. no idea. That's that's a that's a struggle one right there. Quickly back to the Thrawn though. I think this next novel is going to tell us a lot of how he operates. So for the future will know more because this from what it seems like this next book is going to tell us who he's loyal to i mean it's titled treason the uh what is oh, it oh well there's a ton of that the in alliances the well, plot is saying alliances, yeah. that he what implying that he chose his people over the empire yeah but we also have to remember canon the last time he's ever seen as as of what we know with He's the Empire, with the Empire. And he's is like in Rebels and he's so taken off. So I think off. in Treason he's going to prove himself to the Emperor or something. In some way, but maybe in like a back way where he physically is able to fool them into thinking yeah. he's loyal to them while still working for his people on the Vader, side or something. Vader is straight accusing him in alliances. Yeah. Like he's ready to kill him. <laughs> like he yeah. wants to, but he can't because the Emperor would be Well, because he kn- and Vader knows who, or Thrawn knows who Vader is. He figured it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. yeah, we know that. That was fun. It's gonna. I mean, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. On a side note, with the Thrawn stuff, I I'm gonna have a hard time reading that novel because I did not like the first two. It, I I don't know what it was. I, I liked I, the first one. I didn't love the second one. I don't know what it was, and I, I was so excited I don't for think them you because like of the character that, that because much. of no, I love the character of Thrawn, and like I said, I have a, a prior connection to him because of the Thrawn it trilogy. Sucks because I know like Timothy Zahn basically created Thrawn, right? Mm-hmm. It's his, it's his bread and butter. Maybe and someone he, else should write Thrawn. You it, know? And like, it, it may just be a a, a figure of Timothy Zahn, Timothy Zahn having a hard time writing within canon. Yeah, because well, when he wrote he him, being restricted. When he wrote him, yeah. he was he didn't have to deal with canon. And and for me, honestly, I the more time goes by, I really like that first novel. I forget what was the name of it. The just first Thrawn. One? Thrawn. Oh right, yeah, Thrawn. Just Thrawn and then Thrawn. The, the second one. We talked about this. I love the parts with him and Anakin. That, I agree. I didn't I agree love the stuff yes. with him. And I think for for you, Jake, you you hyped yourself up too much for that second book. You the second you saw that cover, maybe because the that, cover, yeah. Really but I think I think you were more excited for the book than I was because remember yeah, but, I didn't like the first novel, but it well, met my expectations. And Padme was a big character in that. And guess what? The Padaway novel comes out next week. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited about that. Wait, did you just call her the Padaway? No, the, I meant the Padme. <laughs> yeah, the Padme. A mixture between the Padme yeah, and the Padme. Um, well, back, let's backtrack to the Rebels real quick. Um, uh, two two questions. We'll get to the first one. Um, favorite season of Rebels, if you had to decide? I have a feeling I know. I mean, it's season two. Just because the Darth Maul stuff. Yeah. And for me, I think there's a moment in Rebels which I'm never going to let go is when... They're, I forget where they're in that cave on Moraban, right? Or is that where they are? No, no it's it's. They're, uh, well, they're in that cave. They're at a, they're at a Sith temple. And yeah. when Vader shows up, Darth Maul is like, oh, scared. hell no. He's scared. He gets the hell out of there. I think there was a meeting between Vader and Darth Maul at some point. At I know we know Anakin has seen Darth Maul as a kid, but 
I think there was a meeting between them at some point, and I want to see imagine that. if we saw a meeting of Anakin who or Darth Vader as he remembers. Well, I think Darth Maul, and then to just like oh. Yeah, I just think that that's kind of maybe what ruined Maul and put made him like go crazy again was like Vader squashed him like a bug. Well, remember we knew he was at the height of power in the at the crime in the crime syndicate. Well, stuff. we also yeah, well, remember in the Clone Wars, the last time we saw him, he was a powerful figure on or no, excuse me, he had been shut down by Palpatine. That was the last time we saw him, and we don't know where he went after that. And then, well. Oh yeah, and then we see him in Solo. He's in Solo. He's in Solo, and Crimson he was Dawn. yeah, he was leading Crimson Dawn, and then we see him in Rebels, and he's like broken. So I think there's so much time. I think Kira so much time and Vader not together, but separately like broke them all <laughs> somehow. Oh, could somehow. be interesting. Kira, that I, could could be I, very interesting. Probably Palpatine probably came back and. Well, there's the one scene where Palpatine's fighting him and his brother, and he just absolutely destroys him that scene is in the Clone Wars. Well, Kills his brother. He kills then, his brother. Yeah, yeah. And then just I have plans for you to Darth Maul. But yep. well, there's he escapes though. He does. Darth Maul escapes. And it's last time we've seen him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, favorite season, Brian. What would you What would you say? I don't know. Honestly, Dawn appeared in season three, right? Yeah, season three and four. I I want to say toss up between two and three. The salt in my mouth is still from how they hyped up the ending of Darth Maul and Obi Wan. Uh, and I, like I said, Thrawn's my favorite character of all time. Nothing's going to change that. So the fact that I got to see him, that's what pulls me to three. So it's, it's honestly a toss up between the two. It's whatever I'm in the mood more for, but two, two resonates more in my mind because of all those, just the things that happened. Mm-hmm. So why? What about you, Jake? <laughs> it's easy. It's it's season two for me. It's, it's, hard it's based not on to Ahsoka. Be season two, yeah. It's and I I res- I remember sitting on my couch and watching the season one finale when she's revealed as Ahsoka, mm-hmm. and I stood up and started clapping as loud as I possibly could, <laughs> and then I this next part I remember is when she figures out that Anakin is Vader mm-hmm. when she has that vision uh, in the cockpit of a ship. Yeah, I remember it's just, that. She like senses him, right? It's yeah, yeah. She she senses Vader, and she realizes that that's it, that's her master. And then you go all the way through that season with Maul and Ahsoka, kind of leading the charge for the ghost ghost crew. And then you end in the, the Sith Temple, um, which here. that 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 finale um, has a lot more going on than just the Maul and Vader and Ezra stuff. Uh, we see the first ever cross guard lightsaber there. Um, Kanan gets blinded. K- he gets blinded as well. Uh, the the uh, the Inquisitors uh, they get shut down very quickly by everyone going on there. Yeah, they got, uh, there's yeah. a lot of relics laying around that we can easily point out to maybe they could shoot on something down the line, like maybe the Knights of Ren. Who knows? Like there's so many things going on in that episode that Dave Filoni is just like, I'm gonna give everyone just the kitchen sink. I'm gonna drop it all on them and drop the bomb. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of animation that they shot there. And, but you know, you're, you're choosing season three possibly, but I like season four. I no, I do honestly. And, season four is the second best. I, I do, and yeah. and a lot of it had to do with them taking a chance and killing the biggest character Kanan, they had. The death of Kanan is huge. That huge, moment huge. is absolutely insane. Uh, it is. It's beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's. And it is a terrible word to use, but it's true. But it's also necessary. Yeah. It's a very necessary. You, we death. knew it was going to happen, and it it just it happened it in the great. perfect way because one, he saved the people that he loved, but two, it was so shocking and so early. It was in the first half of the season. No, excuse me. It was the first episode of the second half of the season when they took that break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They came back and they go. So they had a lot of episodes Kanan. without him. Yes, and I think the season finale was amazing. Oh, be honest. dude. So, like, I... It's on our DVR, and I'll throw it on to fall asleep, So, like, too. season finales are tough. Like, most shows don't do a good job at no. them. No. This show wrapped it up perfectly because everybody thought the whole crew was going to die. The way they sent off every single character was 20 perfect. years in the future. The way they did with Zeb, and I forget the character that David Oyelowo... Is it David Oyelowo? David Oyelowo's character. Voices. That's right. I forgot um, about that. The, re- the, the uh, Empire agent. Yep. So, like, they're, like, enemies. Oh, what's his nickname? 
and then they end up becoming like close friends. And well, they, they go, together. they, they go off together. Yeah, they go off. They to, go to his the, race together. Yeah, they, remember the ghost crew dropped off the elder because he thinks that he killed his yes race, and he, he wanted to show him exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. That was great, and then we find out Hera was a part of all three battles in the the original trilogy. It was Not just a great that. And then Jason Sindula. Just so much good stuff. Uh, how could you leave out the part that Jake lost his oh, mind Oh, well, Ahsoka to? is a lot. Yeah, Ahsoka, yeah. Yeah, I think you have a Snapchat of that. I do. Yeah, I, I, have the, I picture, first time you saw it. I lost I my literally crap. have a picture of him sitting on the couch with his knees to his chest and his hands on the side of his head. It's hilarious. Well, what is that they showed she was still alive after Return of the Jedi. Yep. Yeah. With Sabine, they're on Lothal. And they're going to find Ezra. She's in all white with a staff in her hand. Oh my gosh. She looks she looks like Gandalf the Grey or White or whatever you want to call him. Like she looks like the savior of the galaxy. She I oh my god, I will lose my crap if she was up on live action. I will lose my crap. That should be She's gotta be done perfectly though. Ahsoka and Sabine going into wild space. That's the next show. It's got to be. It, it's live be, action. Where, where, where else? <laughs> where would else you do would they? If it was a live action show. I would definitely be iffy. I'll be honest. Yeah. Because I love I the way too. they do it in animation. I know. I kind of, as much as I want Ahsoka in live action, I kind of. I wanted, like her where she is. I kind of wanted to stay in animation. Because and and honestly, animation there's not as many rules as live action. You can do anything you want within the canon no, boundaries. And of animation. Get her I think there's more wars. risk. <sighs> And I think there's more risk in live action. Well, you can choose the wrong actri- actress. You can choose the wrong director. If you're doing animation, you got Dave Filoni who created like, the character. It's probably, and so much more expensive. Is she your favorite character? <laughs> She's top three. Oh, I'll ooh, say that. Okay, okay. She's top three. That should be one. Ex- ex- uh, nice little podcast of who's our top threes and why. Oh, maybe I haven't thinking about it, Brian. <laughs> never know. Um, all right, well, any uh, – or oh, let me ask this real quick before we get out of here. Uh, when is – do you think you guys will check out Rebels again and rewatch it pretty soon? This yeah, year? Like, next year? I've been thinking about watching it again. I like – I don't know where – I, I mean, it's been a year. It's, yeah. it's kind of like the perfect opportunity to. No, for sure. That's crazy because obviously like we didn't – we haven't been planning this episode for weeks. Um, so I had been thinking about that for like the last month about – I need to rewatch Rebels again. After I get off my Game of Thrones binge before uh, last season happens, I think I'm going to jump up on Rebels. I, but I kind of want to. I remember we watched the Clone Wars too, so I don't know how. I, I turn it on it. every night as I go to sleep. It just keeps Dude, playing Clone Wars over, and over and over and over and over again. A lot of your lifetime to rewatch. They're only 30 minute episodes, yeah, though. But there's a lot. If, <laughs> if uh, like Lucasfilm, if they have the rights to Clone Wars, or do this Cartoon Network. You know what I mean? Well, I would assume Disney has uh, it now, It's so. Disney because the final... George Lucas owned well, it. Well, no, season six... Oh, it's uh, going to be on the streaming service. No, that's season seven. Season oh. six aired on Netflix. Oh, that's right. So they cut ties with Cartoon Network after season those five. seasons are like under Net- Cartoon Network, you know? Anyways, I'm just wondering if they're going to be on the streaming service, you know? I'm oh, sure. I think they're going to put their entire library on there. And I think... Rebels will be on there. Well, it's I hope so be. because, like, I don't know how to access Rebels right now. You know I don't I mean? think there is any way to access you it. Well, you can buy the yeah. ep- you can buy the season. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I might go buy the Blu-rays, man. Uh, it's not a bad sure. idea. They're not cheap. <laughs> they, 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 oh, I know they they're expensive. Yeah, uh, worth it though. Oh yeah, yeah. I would put it. Well, like in you my... gotta have it in the whole collection. You I know? agree. Of yeah, all the movies on the Star Wars wall. With your new Ray uh, hot toy. Yes, Ray is here with us as well. She's, uh, she's not talking though. She's mad because her battery arm is broken. So. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, to a break, it broken Ray. Uh, we're going to be ending the pad one today on our Star Wars Rebel Talk. Um, yeah, this show is now. Uh, it's been a year since it has finally aired on uh, Disney XD, and we are very happy that we received this kind of show from Dave Filoni and Company. Um, and we will definitely be checking it out soon. If you love this show just as much as us. Or if you have questions about it, if you do not like it, uh, leave some thoughts in the comments about everything we talked about today. Your favorite character, favorite season, um, what do you think they're going to do next? Are they even going to do anything next? Thrawn, Ezra, the whole nine yards. Leave some thoughts down there. We will definitely love to hear from you guys. Also post some other questions. Maybe we can get uh, that question on a pattern one next time. Um, That would definitely give us some ideas what you guys want to hear, what we can talk about. That would be a lot of fun. Um, Guys, thank you for joining me on the pattern one today. As always, love talking Star Wars with you guys. Uh, for Grandma Barley, for Brian Fett. Uh, it's got a ring to it, man. For now. For uh, Qui-Gon Jake, uh, thank you again for joining us on the Padawan Podcast today. 
and we will see you guys next time. May the force be with you.